All right guys, welcome back to my channel. Today what I wanna do is I wanna talk about a topic that has been asked to me over and over again. It's a very good question, and that is why I decided I need to make a video on it, because this has been a repetitive question a lot through email, through Instagram, and through comments on my YouTube page. Two GFIs, I've had the same question as, how many GFIs can you put on one circuit? Now, I commented a while back on it and said, you know, you can put, you know, the same amount as a regular circuit. So I think it's like 10 for a 20 amp and uh, eight for a 15 amp circuit. So I did that, I said that, and I think some person emailed me and said I was wrong in a whole long spiel. And then I realized that they, I didn't talk I guess answer the question as I should have. Uh, if you use more than one GFI on a circuit, you can't, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot bring the main power in on the line and go out on the load and put the load back on this one. It will not work like that at all. And I'm going to show you, prove it to you right here with this box, these boxes that I have right here, to prove you that it won't work. And I also am gonna show you how to do it so you can have two GFIs on one circuit and make it so it will work, all right? Super easy, guys. But I'm gonna show you the wrong way first. So obviously, these are two brand new GFIs. I got a white one, or ivory, and I got a brown one. Both of them are 20 amp. Both of them have the stickers on it. When I get going here, they won't have the stickers on for long. I'm also gonna be using a green wire net. If you guys are interested in how to use these, because this was another good long question that I had, repetitively, and I made a video on it, and I'll link it right up here in the corner if you guys wanna watch that, how to use these things. I know it seems like, well, duh, but that's what I thought too, and not throwing rocks at anybody, but when I first saw these, I thought, these were the stupidest things I ever saw, and I didn't really understand how to use them, so I was in the same boat as all these people were asking these questions, so I decided to make a video. Anyway, let's jump in here. We're gonna start out doing it the wrong way. So method one is the wrong way. If you do it like the way I'm gonna do it, and we're gonna, I'm gonna explain this to you, this video might be you know, 15, 16, 17 minutes long, but you're gonna learn how to do it the right way. But first, we're gonna do it the wrong way, just so you guys will see what will happen. So let's dive right on in here. So what we have here is we have a box with the main power in it. If you've ever watched any of my electrical videos, you guys know that I have it on a cord, just so I can keep rolling with these videos. And then you have your wires going to this box right here. So this wire is this wire. You guys can see this huge, well, you can't see it all because it's not in frame, but basically it just goes from this box to this box. That's all it does. Just jumps right over, all right? So normally, if you don't know what you're doing and you were to wire up a GFI, and let me stop right here and say that this is the only receptacle that I personally feel comfortable ever Stripping and putting under the lugs. I always, always, always tell you guys to wrap your screws around the um, receptacles or switches because, well, you guys will know. If you don't know, have a video on it. Guess where it'll be? Up in that corner right there. Okay. These receptacles in the back have clamp shells, so when you screw them in, they clamp down on the wire. This is the only kinds of receptacles that I would ever, ever ever use or switches if there's some switches actually have the clamp style also so just keep that in mind when i say don't ever stab in the back this time you can all right got some dual strippers here links to a lot of these tools that i'm using are down in my description area for amazon they will only help me out with the, uh, if you buy from my store it'll help me keep making these videos now let's look at this this is a green wire nut we're gonna be using here in just a second. What we're gonna do is really, really, really easy and it's very helpful. Like I said, I do have a video on this. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna slide this down now. Or well, normally, you would never have stranded wire, but for this, because I have it on a little extension cord, you would, you're gonna have a, um, it's gonna be stranded. So there's really no, you know, making your joints up because, you know, you well, you know. Okay, now the wrong way is this way, okay? So we're gonna put this under here like so, and I'm gonna leave these out of the box. 
Uh, I don't ever, ever recommend leaving these out of the box to, to do any testing, but we're gonna do it for here. Okay, so what we got, it's very easy to see because this is stranded wire. So you guys will know exactly what I'm talking about when I say, you know, where's the power and where's the high, because these are obviously uh, solid and this is stranded. Okay, so normally what you would do, the line would come in and that's your hot. Well, if you don't know where the line load is, it says it right here on the back of this GFI. Line, and this is your load. So, we're gonna take this off because we're gonna use it temporarily. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll put the neutrals on first, and then the hots. All right, and neutral is always silver. And if you didn't know that, and you're still in your colorblind or whatever, well, you can just look here and the bigger blade, and our 20 amp will have this little divot on the side, but uh, the bigger blade, you see these two are different sizes, that coincides with the neutral, okay? Okay, let's put this hot under here. All right, we're gonna do the same thing. Now, normally, if this was gonna be just a regular receptacle, this is how you would do it, because you want this one to be protecting this one. And this is the way a lot of people think that if you have more than one GFI in your circuit, it needs to be. This, believe me guys, is the wrong way. And I wanna prove it to you and I wanna show you guys because up until, like I said, before that point, I didn't have any clue that this guy that was trying to wire his bathroom was doing it. And I, I don't know, I just assumed. And you know what happens when you assume? Hmm, do you know? Makes ass out of you and me. So. Let's see what happens here. So we'll go ahead and we'll strip this out, dual strippers, two wires, one set of strippers. Boom, awesome, huh guys? Pretty fantastic. All right, and we're just gonna wire this one like normal. You know, if this was our regular receptacle, which, because we don't know, but we're getting ready to find out, aren't we? All right, we'll do the neutral next, and then the hot. All right, now, like I mentioned, this is the wrong way to do it, okay? So, just to recap, we brought our hot into the line on this one. This one right here. We brought our hot into the line on this one. All right, so hot on the line is from the panel. On the load goes to this. This is our load, all right? So, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna plug this unit in right here with the extension cord, and we're gonna see what happens. So we come here to our first one. We're gonna plug our tester in here. We're gonna see, all right? Now you know that the power's on and it says correct. So we'll trip it out, correct? Right, it should trip this one out. And let's see if it did. Yep, it did. So let's reset this one. We have no power here, guys. What the heck? Why is that? It won't trip. Put it in a little further. Still no power. Let's get a meter and see if there definitely is no power. All right, so I'm just using my ideal meter here. We know that this circuit is hot, but we know it's hot because I told you it was hot. Let's use the meter and let's see if it is truly hot. Let's see. All right. All right, we have 120 volts. Right? On both, let's see if we have it on both. Yep. Let's see on this one here. We have nothing. Why is that? All right, let's say you get to this point and you're like, I know I got this receptacle right. What the heck? Now you pull it, now you pull your receptacle out of your box. So now you've got a hot live circuit, which please don't ever do this. I'm just showing you guys. I'm just showing you guys. So don't, don't ever do this. But let me show you that you do have 120 volts here. See, you, you have 120 volts here. You cannot feed one GFI to another GFI. Now, this is the incorrect way, plain and simple. So let's be safe, let's take our power off. We want to double check and make sure that the power's off. So we'll take this tester and we'll plug it in here, even though we know it's off. I mean, because I unplugged it, but 
it's completely dead. Now, how are we going to fix this? So, you can have multiple GFIs on one circuit, because this is just one circuit. You saw me plug it in, so you definitely know it's only one circuit. Let me show you the correct way to fix this so you can have this GFI and this GFI on with no problems. So let me show you. All right, the problem is in the very first GFI, okay? What is the problem? What you're doing with this GFI here, you're coming, you're telling this GFI on the main power on your line coming into this GFI that anything on the bottom side of these screws, which is basically the ones on the back, which says load, anything on this needs to be protected. Well, if you already have another protected device on here, uh, you, it just won't work. I don't know, I cannot tell you a scientific reason. Uh, I'm just an electrician. I'm not a magician, but sometimes I am a magician. And I can tell you how to fix this. If for some reason you're watching this and you know the correct terminology and all that jazz on why that won't work, then let me know. I just know for 100% fact, I just showed you guys for one, that it will not work. So let's make sure this GFI is safe here. Let's look at this one. All right, so we do know for our video purposes, like I mentioned, this is stranded wire. So we do know that the line is the top and it's right here, right? It's this plug right here, as you can see. There it is. So how are we gonna fix it? So if you wanna continually put GFIs on down the line, which I don't really know why you would want to. I mean, there's there are reasons, but I don't really know why you would want to. But if you did, all you have to do is take your load off here. So the load is this wire right here that goes up out of this box. It goes up out of this box. It makes a loop and it comes right back down to this box, to this receptacle. So we're going to take it off of this GFI right here. So let's go ahead and break it loose. The grounds are completely fine. All right, so now your load is no longer has any wires on it. So now on the back here where it says load, there's no wires. And what you're left with is these two wires. Now you can do one of two things. And if it were me, I would do this. I would take these back off, make a joint and put one wire under here. But see what they did here? They gave you a spot to put another wire on here. Now you can do that and we're going to just for the sake of this video, but because I have a lot more videos with these receptacles and these boxes and these wires. But regardless, we're gonna put both these whites under one screw right now, right? There's nothing wrong with this at all. I am completely okay with putting two wires under here, but for my purposes, other than this video, I would never do that. I know, why am I doing it now, right? Well, like I said, it's just for this video purpose. It's not for anything else because, you know, Okay, so now, got two wires under the hot. Tighten her up. All right, so now you have two wires under the brass or the hot screw, two wires under the silver or the neutral screw. All right, now, make sure we're all good and safe here. All right, let's plug it in and now let's see what happens because I'm kind of curious to see if it'll work. I mean, I know it will. Don't tell nobody though. Okay, we're gonna turn it on. All right, we're gonna put, we call this a monkey, our little tester in here. And we see that the lights are on. All right, let's trip it out. Okay, all right, now let's go over to this receptacle. All right, you see, here's the monkey. It is on, that's great. But wait a minute, we don't have it on here. But we do here. Let's see if it'll trip out. Oh yeah, tripped. All right, there you have it guys. The only way to make more than one GFI on one circuit work is to put them, your wires, your wire going from one GFI to the next on basically on the same side. So you don't use the load at all. That is the only time you would do that. Is, or if you, or, or if you only wanted this to be GFI and the rest of them not. So basically, that's the correct way, the second way. The first way is the non-correct way. Never, never put a load 
on for another GFI. It just, it just won't work like that. It can't. You saw, I just proved it. So that is the way you do it right. Okay, guys? If you have any other ideas, any electrical videos that you might want to see, um, any diagnosing, any troubleshooting, please drop me a comment down below. Let me know. Also, down in the descriptions, I have uh, all my affiliate links for all these tools that I used. Uh, you can check them out there. I also have now a storefront. If you just want to check it out, you can click on there. It pulls up one big page and has all my stuff on there with the pictures and everything. You can click on there. Also shop through there. Super easy. Super convenient. Didn't even know I had that until just recently, so it's good for me. Um, also... I have an address, Patreon, and uh, anything else. If you want to send me anything, guys, you know, don't send me any cookies. Well, maybe, maybe you can send me some cookies. But anyway, feel free to send anything you guys want to, guys. If you like what you see, like and subscribe. God bless, and we'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.